managed to undo the tuning capacitor. That wasn't an easy job. There's a replacement output transformer which I had to unscrew and unsolder some leads first and then unscrew and unsolder this. Plus there's about three or four braids that's holding to ground on the chassis so I went ahead and cut it. Left some extra over here in hopes that I'll be able to re-solder that together. I should be able to but now I'm able to get to these pieces. You can see this one's just completely crumbled away. This one, I think there's some stuff left. I'll just give you an idea how bad it is. This is what's left of the uh, top of the uh, grommet. Crumblies. So we're left with two holes. I'll go on ahead and clean all around this and clean all this up and then get two new grommets put back in and then get everything back up, get these spacers in place and get everything pushed back down again. Okay, cleaned off as best as I could. There's a little corrosion in here in this section. Otherwise, and there's a little bit here, but otherwise everything looks good. It's clean. Let's put in the grommets. Okay, new grommets are now in place. Let's see if I can get my light in there. There we go. Wearing a headlight. My age, my eyes just uh, need a little more light to see what's going on. But now those are in place. This is solid. All I gotta do now is solder that braid back over to here. And then I'm debating on disconnecting this bastard and trying to make sure everything's where it needs to be on it. This is, I guess you could call it the coil assembly. Not so much coil tower like a transoceanic, but uh, Something tells me I probably should take this thing apart and make sure everything's where it needs to be. So, I'll debate that. But in the meantime, I'll get everything over here topside all taken care of. Alright, it's pretty dark in here. I've got the radio plugged in. I just wanted to see first if the filaments are glowing, and yes, they are. Let's put some light on the situation. I'll even use my backlight here. There, a little more diffuse. Uh, the thing I wanted to find out is if this thing even works. And so far I'm finding out no, it is not the case. So here's the second part. We're going to do the beat test, uh, which would be I've got my old uh, college era Sony. It's an ICF. C220W Dream Machine Radio. It's a clock radio I used when I was in college back in 87. I'm going to use it as the uh, test subject. I've got it on AM. I've got it set in the middle of the AM band and I'm going to tune manually this and I'm going to check on both sides of the uh, switch here all the way over, all the way over to the other side because I can't remember which one's AM. And either way, I've got to hear some sort of schwacky sound out of that. If I hear it, then I know that tube's working. Now, I can put my thumb on, put the finger on here. I'm getting audio for the uh, antenna, but I'm not getting any radio stations through this whole rigmarole. So here we go. We're going to turn this on. And it's also picking up the uh, interference from the uh, AT&T modem. So... I'm going to set this over here. That should be either one or two. I'm going to tune it. Nothing. Switch it the other way. Nothing here either. So that tells me osculator, either the tube or this section, and I'm willing to believe it's this section, honestly, is not working. So this may just have to come out after all. 
Okay, I'm working on the underside of this radio, and I gotta say, this is a mess. This is roughly where the oscillator's at, and this is where the BFO is. I'm in the process of replacing these ancient Olsen electronics caps with more modern ones. And I'm looking over here at the schematic and trying to see if things match up with what, and well, it's just a mess, the way it was put together. Um, here's a resistor I found that I think is supposed to be something to the effect of, yeah, 10K. It's a lot higher than that. In fact, you can't even read the uh, measurement on it anymore. It's gone, so I'm going to have to put a new one in. I'm probably just going to have to tear all this apart and just put it back together properly because oh, it's just a mess. I've taken out the electrolytic label to each one where it's supposed to go, and that doesn't belong there. And I'm just going to work my way through here, replacing whatever capacitors that I see in here. And This is that bias cell, which I'm probably going to clean that up a little bit. It has... I don't know if you can see in there. It does have a watch battery in there, but uh, uh, I've never been a fan of hot glue. I may just do that with uh, contact cement, make it a little bit neater. But slowly and surely, I'm trying to get all this cleaned up, because this is just an out-and-out -out mess, to say the least. So it's going to take a little bit, and I'm dubious about some of these dog bone resistors if their values haven't uh, gone up as that one did um, it's just going to take some time this has been replaced but I've got to go find it and get rid of all that so slowly we dive in okay I think I've got the BFO circuit straightened out it goes from the switch which would be that circle to a 10k resistor which read astronomically high to the beginning of this small, it's probably a tickler coil if I had to guess, and then in between there's a .02 capacitor. Now, this end of the coil, I measured it out, I finally figured out where it's at, it's a red wire, and then the other side goes to this plate of the 6C5, so I found this. How they had it wired, I have no idea, but this is how I did it. Here's the switch, there's the 10K resistor, going to that red wire and then here going down to ground which is right here so that part's taken care of now I'm going to take care of this situation and I'm probably also going to take this out and put my new capacitors in place on a uh, terminal strip uh, I could probably take that apart but it's just too much of a pain in the ass it's just easier if I just take this out it's already been boogered anyway so <laughs> A little more boogering ain't going to make much difference. Well, some good news. I've replaced most of the capacitors and some resistors that had drifted out of tolerance. And, you can hear barely, shortwave station. I've got it on one of the shortwave bands, but it's very touchy. I've got here, Trying to find my finger. Yes, this little spot right there. That's a gimmick capacitor. It's two wires that are wrapped around that makes capacitance. I think there's one here, too. Uh, right here. I don't know what the deal is with that. I'm going to have to do some more investigation. But, I'm getting sound out of this. That's pretty good on AM. There we go. There it is. get a station here. In fact, I'll tell you what. Okay, there's WLW. So, everything is working now in terms of the stations. It's just shortwave is just lousy. And I think part of it is I still may have some bad uh, resistors, like they still got some wire wounds in here. They could have drifted up in value. Uh, there's still a couple over here, so I'm just going to take a little bit at a time, whittle away at it, and then eventually I'm uh, going to be getting some dial string. I thought I had some, but the stuff that I got wasn't what I needed. 
So I've got it on order from Radio Days, and then once that happens, I can get everything reassembled up here. Then I can tackle tuning up. I've always heard that these things weren't the best performers in the world, and I'm beginning to understand that. I think my old 37 Zenith could do better than this thing can.